Good morning everyone, Crypto Lemon speaking. Today is Friday, November 13th and we have a bunch of really, really great news to cover. So let's get to it. First of all, we're going to talk about Ants financial suspended IPO. It was last week, but why it might actually be related to the digital uh, Chinese yuan and why it's very important for the space going forward. Uh, we're going to talk about PayPal crypto trading going live in the US uh, for some of its clients today, uh, yesterday night actually, but um, it will be rolling out a lot today and over the weekend. So this is also a very bullish news. We're going to also talk about DeFi that is definitely not dead as we've seen uh, really uh, people, uh, user, new users uh, running into the space and old time user just providing liquidity even if the incentives are well less uh, let's say uh, <laughs> crazy as they used to be a few weeks or months back. So let's get to it, guys. First of all, crypto market cap is at 472 billion. It's been going up almost 2.5 percent over the past 24 hours. Bitcoin is, is solidly sitting north of 16k, Ethereum north of 465 dollars, and we have all the altcoins, let's say, faring a bit less. Uh, wells and the, the top, the kings, let's say Bitcoin and Ethereum. What's important to see is that we moved north of 16k as we, as I just said, but uh, it's the first time for the, uh, the past three years, so this is really important and we've been holding it quite easily actually at the moment, so I'm quite uh, honestly impressed and we have a lot of um, new money pouring it, especially in all the open interest um, just keeps growing, keeps growing. People are taking long position. A lot of institutional are betting that Bitcoin will go higher and volumes are really, really trading up. If you, if you look just over the past week compared to, let's say, months ago, it's just, it's just two to three times more volume. So this is really impressive. And we have something. Uniswap just crossed $3 billion locked. Uh, so it's been let's say stable and just moving upwards uh, for the past days but this is impressive after all the shit and the fud that people have been telling um, DEX users that basically MM, AMM and all the DEXs were just working because of the really high incentive look at Uniswap it has almost no more uh, uni incentive just the fees and it just it just keeps getting the really great liquidity. This could be really good for the space. Uh, all these companies, some of them are under VC control, so they could raise a lot of money going forward to develop new functionalities as now they have a, let's say, stable um, revenue stream. So more investors could actually get on the private um, equity side. So really, really good. We're going to talk a bit more about it later. So this is a uh, ENS financial suspended IPO that happened uh, one week back, one week ago. It really shocked the financial markets. It was really one that was weighted by the financial community. But what's really important is that apparently it's mostly linked to the fact that Chinese government is scared to lose control of a payment as um, ENS financial and um, so it's Alipay mostly and WeChat, which is another, let's say, WhatsApp, but you can pay inside of it, control more of 70% of all the payments, uh, online digital and online payments in China. So uh, the digital yuan is trying to bring back some of this percentage back to, to Chinese commercial banks and the government. And so therefore, they, they, they just released uh, some kind of new regulation against let's say, uh, too much power in hands, financial hand. And notably, uh, with Chinese government and China has had a long, long, long history of a really big shadow banking system, which means that it's a lot of uh, consumer credit and let's say uh, not really backed credit that the government has no oversight on which means can be a problem if there is a recession, coronavirus or whatever, and these payments start to default, it could make a, a cascade effect. So what they also targeted is that uh, Alipay, so Ends Financial, has been offering a lot, a lot of consumer credit lately. It's one of the main providers of this type of credit. But the thing that they're really worried about is that they offer the platform where you could get a, a credit line from Alipay. But then the risk is on a bank 
who they partner with. And so on all the credits they give to their consumers, because they have the client-facing app, they just get 2% um, of the loans on their balance sheet. All the rest is given to commercial banks, state banks, or whatever, that takes actually the credit risk. And this this was not sitting well with the Chinese government, so they're really looking into how to uh, make uh, Alipay's or even WeChat to get more um, funding and to take more of the risk on their own balance sheet and that they have to back it up with some cash. And in the future, they'll have to back it up with digital yuan. So this is their point. This is how they plan to push it. And also digital yuan is really nice because if Chinese users, if Chinese customers use it, when they will want to have fiat, they will have to go to a commercial bond to get fiat. So it will give also more of these uh, trades and these fees to commercial banks with the not touching at the moment as if I am an Alipay or WeChat customer, I just transact in the app and commercial banks do not get any type of, uh, of fees for this. So this is uh, quite important. The only thing is that Digital Yuan is making a lot of um, promotion. Like if you use Digital Yuan, you get $30 back. If you all this kind of thing we've seen in crypto for a long time to get uh, mass adoption and something also to be worried about from the customer side is that it will allow also banks and Chinese government to monitor actually your credit kind of rating in real time because they will have access to every transaction you make with this digital yuan. So this is also less privacy as usual, less uh, freedom. But in China, let's say we're not really um, shocked by this kind of news. And they want to really push it, notably for the uh, Olympic Games, I think I read, in 2022, so that uh, foreigners could just come and just uh, transact the euro on an app for digital yuan really easily, as it is not easy as a, easy at the moment, as you need to have a bank account in China to have uh, onshore uh, yuan. Uh, so, so it's a mess, actually. So this could also simplify uh, the life or make more more simple the life of uh, foreigners when they go to china so this is this is quite a big news it just shows how china is pushing for digital yuan for many different reasons uh it can be regulatory can be uh the banking system kind of uh leverage that they want to monitor it can be to uh, control its citizen it can be to uh to make the yuan more uh, a more international currency it can be for so many reasons but this is really on their agenda and they're moving fast and forward so let's let's keep an eye on this today or uh, yesterday we had the uh, paypal crypto trading going live in the us so they increased the maximum amount they could uh, you could trade from 10k to 20k a week and the shift to digital uh, i'm just read the CEO, what the ceo of paypal dan schulman actually said he said the shift to digital forms of currencies is inevitable bringing with it clear advantages in terms of financial inclusion and access efficiency speed and resilience of the payment system and the ability for governments to disburse funds to citizens quickly so this is something we'll have really liked during the COVID-19 crisis, for example. And so they start to roll it out at the merchant. They have 26 million merchants globally and their customer could not buy Bitcoin. So this is really, really big news. And I expect, let's say, maybe the current pump we've seen on Bitcoin, mostly due to this kind of news. DeFi the odds, total user numbers up 55% in just weeks. So this is crazy. Like I thought it slowed down, but in terms of user, Let's keep in mind a user is just an address. So you could have one user with different addresses, which is my case, for example, but I did not create new ones over the past months. So we definitely have new users. And DeFi, uh, the sector user count increased by nearly 40% from half a million to 777,000 uh, during October. So this is just an increase in of 40 percent in just a month on some things that was already mooning the new user count over the past six months so this is really impressive all dexes are experiencing it from compound to to uniswap so this is a really big news and actually makes me really really bullish on DeFi, and that might actually be why some of the DeFi accounts have been uh, bouncing back lately 
So this is all for today. I wish you all a great weekend and, and let's stay tuned because we have a lot, a lot of positive news coming up and expect this trend to continue. So let's make some money. <laughs> have a great day, guys. Bye-bye.